Have you ever wanted to live abroad part-time? Maybe you're retired and you want to keep your home, but you yearn for a change of pace for a few months a year. Maybe you've dreamed of living abroad your entire life and never got the chance, but you just can't uproot your life and go full-time. Whatever the reason, we're here to explain what we call flexpat living. It's a little term we made up. We do that a lot. <laughs> yes. We could probably write a dictionary. <laughs> yes, a retirement traveler's dictionary of made-up terms. <laughs> Nobody would buy it, but... <laughs> so we're, we want to show you how you can live abroad part-time without a big investment and without all the red tape of residential visas. Uh, you might be surprised at just how affordable this option is, so stay tuned. We're John and Bev, and we are the Retirement Travelers. We are a senior travel couple who are enjoying a life of full-time world travel. We are currently traveling on an around-the-world journey where we are blogging our adventures for our website, retirementtravelers.com. So head over there and sign up for our newsletter. Oh, and be sure to hit subscribe. After all, our kids think we're cute old people. Well, you're, you're cute. I'm just old. <laughs> you're cute too, baby. <laughs> Thanks. So today we're going to tell you about an idea that we talk about all the time. All the time. Yeah, it's called Flexpat Living. You know, recently we did a video where we mentioned it and we had several inquiries about what this really looks like and how it compares to expat living. First, flexpat living is the idea of living abroad in different locations, starting by living in one city for 90 days. Now, this is the length of time of most tourist visas. You pick a city, pack your bag, and go live for a few months in a rented home or an apartment, and then repeat it at another location. It is the very deliberate idea of immersing oneself into a community, much like an expat. The emphasis is on being a resident and not a tourist. International snowboarding is like this, but with flex padding, you switch countries and you don't always go to the same place. So let's pick a country and start there. Let's say you decide to go to Costa Rica. Now this country has a tourist visa that allows someone to stay in their country for 90 days. Now in 90 days, you can rent a home or an apartment, you can explore, you can meet some local people, you can interact, you can even learn the language. You know, you live a fun and interesting life there. You know, you can connect with groups, you can find a church, or perhaps even find a volunteer opportunity. You immerse yourself. You know, you meet the butcher, the baker, and even the candlestick <laughs> maker. You know, you go with the purpose of not being a tourist, but being a resident. Yeah, and at the end of this period, you pack up your things and you either go home or you spend 90 days in another country. Now, if it were us, we'd head next door to Nicaragua mm -hmm. or Italy or the Philippines or Ecuador. I mean, the possibilities are endless. The point is go to another location and repeat the process. Make friends, connect with groups, learn about the place, eat the food, whatever. I mean, in the process, you stay for another three months, you relax, you think, you live, and you take your time. Also, if you consider our suggestion of flexpat living, take a look at our video called A Life Without Stuff. It'll help you see the impact of having fewer things has had on our life. We also have a packing light video, so be sure to check both of them out. Think of it as doing a little homework to see where we're coming from. Let's talk about what this does for you. One of the biggest reasons we like flexpat living is that it avoids the high cost of setting up an expat home in another country. I mean, many people give up on expat living when they realize the bureaucratic nightmare mm -hmm. that they are about to encounter. Many countries have income requirements, medical screenings, and investment minimums, meaning you must purchase a home or start a business. These residential visas can take a long time to acquire and, and much of the joy and of going and starting over begins with this huge cloud hanging over their heads. You know, some countries, you know, you can get a residential visa for a couple of years and then you must reapply for it, you know, even if you've already bought a home. Uh, the result for many people, not all, is that after the honeymoon period's over, they want to head back to where they came from. You know, they, they have a house to move and they end up with a lot of regrets because it isn't the nirvana that they had imagined. You know, if, if you're thinking of full-time abroad, uh, flexpat living will allow you to try out a country or two on for size before making a long-term commitment. 
we highly recommend that you at least do a year or two of flex padding before attempting full-time expat living. Yeah. It lets you compare places so you have less regret and you can find the perfect place for you. Probably the first thing that comes to mind is the cost of something like this. We have found that the biggest cost of travel is how fast you move. Now, if you move weekly like us, mm -hmm. your costs are going to be higher. But if you move slowly, a plane ticket from one country to another is an expense that you can account for. I mean, there are some great bargains to be had if you are flexible with your schedule. Many of the expenses you have while you're away from home are ones you would normally have, but are oftentimes much cheaper. We've also found that other than the traditional Airbnb or Verbo type rentals, you can get a better bargain if you go local in your search. Now, we check prices when we arrive at a city, mm -hmm. and if you book, say, a three-month rental with a local realtor, you can get a very good deal. In most low-cost countries, you can live inexpensively, making it very affordable for most retirees. You know, if you want to know more about, you know, the cost of these places, just do a quick search and you will see that renting a nice place is very affordable. Uh, you might want to go, you know, see a place for three months and you could see it for the same price as a riverboat cruise or even a luxury vacation that only lasts two weeks. Yes, and when we travel to low-cost countries, we are shocked that the prices are so low. Now, this is a great way to live without the high inflation that affects more developed countries. We really dread the effect that high-cost countries have on our budget. Yes. <laughs> we love visiting those places, but we dread paying for them. Uh, in low-cost countries, we are always so pleasantly surprised by the prices of everyday things. Mm -hmm. On top of that, the experience is oftentimes more interesting. The people are more approachable, and the interaction is very memorable. In lower-cost countries like these, the grocery store is more affordable along with local farmers markets. You know, usually the street markets offer great produce and oftentimes there's a Saturday or Sunday market that most Americans would die for. <laughs> <laughs> they are incredible and we have seen them all over the place. You know, the prices are cheap and the quality is great. When we travel, even to low-cost locations, we are amazed at the upscale dining opportunities you would think only come from high-end locations. Mm -hmm. People are creating gorgeous restaurants in these places, and we are constantly amazed at our choices. For example, we love Medellin, Colombia, and when we stay in El Poblado, a lovely part of town, we can go to a fancy restaurant and have a salmon dinner for two mm. with vegetables and drinks and desserts and the whole nine yards for about $30. Now, this is a great meal, one in the States that would start at $75 to $100. Mm -hmm. The medical care is the same. You know, we have received medical care in Medellin for about $40 per visit for things like a dental exam and cleaning, a mammogram, she got the mammogram, uh, <laughs> yes. I didn't, an ophthalmologist exam, and even blood work. You know, it seems that everything costs about $40. Always. <laughs> yeah, our, our prescriptions are all name brand and they cost about a tenth of the cost of what you would pay in the United States. Yeah. So it's just a win-win for FlexPats looking for a break and we always stock up before we continue our trip. Now, as a side note, we have medical coverage in the states that reimburses us for our medical care. So you need a policy if you're going to travel like this. If you have Medicare, you might want to add a global plan like GeoBlue or Cigna Global that gives you mm -hmm. coverage while you're abroad uh, to supplement your coverage back home. It's a big topic, one that has many variables. Mm -hmm. Now recently, we did a poll on our channel and asked how long most people wanted to travel in retirement. The answer surprised us. Most want to travel for three to six months a year. This is why FlexPat Living is on our minds a lot. You know, we think this is a wonderful way to add travel stays within the retirement budget. Oftentimes, we see people leave off the low-cost destinations, and we think this is a big mistake. So let's talk about the varied adventures or journeys that you could have. Flexpat Living gives you many experiences in many different cultures. Mm -hmm. It allows you the opportunity to take your time, travel the world very slowly, live a rich life, and build upon an enlightened perspective of the world. People ask us all the time where our favorite places are. 
And they are never the places that are the tourist hotspots. They are always the out of the way, surprising experiences mm. that we have that we didn't expect. It's the place where the people are approachable and curious. It's the places that you see and you wonder why this place isn't at the top of every tourist list out there. It's the places where we see people living their lives normally, not in an area that has become a caricature of itself. You're probably wondering which countries we've been to that we think would make good choices. Now, for low-cost countries, we have a lot of recommendations. A lot. <laughs> yeah, we loved Colombia, uh, North Macedonia, Argentina, Philippines, Malaysia, uh, Romania, Albania. There's just so many. You know, we, we loved Montenegro, uh, Hungary. Guatemala, let's see, Bulgaria, and even Thailand. So many great choices. Yeah, and for mid-range countries, we would recommend Panama and Costa Rica and Spain, Portugal, Greece, Italy, Slovenia. Oh, that was awesome. Croatia and Malta. We think that any of these countries would make great FlexPat locations for three months at a time. So what do you think about FlexPat living? We think flexibility is the greatest attribute. As a retired person, it offers grand adventures while maintaining a home base as well. It offers someone who has a full life back home to, to take a break and integrate into another community. You know, it gives people a new lease on life. And if a low cost countries are chosen, it doesn't wreak havoc on the retirement budget. It also allows someone to follow the most ideal weather around the world <laughs> and take advantage of shoulder seasons in the most popular tourist spots. It has a lot of good sides and not many downsides. That's right. And if you have any questions, please leave them below. And if you want to check out these two videos we mentioned earlier, here they are. We hope they inspire you to live your best life and have another grand adventure. Be sure to hit subscribe and follow along on our retirement journey around the world.